Greetings, viewers. Uh, today we have a pen that was actually suggested by a viewer. Sometimes viewers will suggest pens, and often it's a pen that I actually have, so it's just simply a matter of pulling a pen out of the out of the collection and uh, doing the shooting the video. This was a pen that a viewer suggested that I did not have, so I actually went and acquired it. It is the Dollar Pen Model 717. It is from Pakistan, and uh, the name Dollar Pen is somewhat aptly named. So I was able to pick this pen up. Uh, in a package, it came ten to a package, um, and uh, as w so, they came in uh, in several different varieties. So they, you got these solid color ones. It came in several several solid color pens um, in uh, both gray, maroon, and blue. And then I've got some uh, clear demonstrator versions with blue, maroon, and um, black trim. Uh, they also threw in a bonus pen, a completely different pen made by Dollar Pen. This is a Dollar Pen model SP10, which we'll definitely do in a, in a subsequent video. So, so, so basically, I got 11 pens from Dollar Pen for shipped all the way from Pakistan for roughly um, $14. So it wasn't too much more than a dollar. This uh, package here, it says uh, 717, they call it calligraphy pen. And this here uh, means pen in Urdu. And if you look on the back here, it says it's got a calligraphy nib suitable for writing Arabic and Urdu, an integral piston type ink filling system, lodging tank, etc. So um, seems to be a nice pen, but we will we will find out. As you can see, it's not a particularly large pen. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see it's a little bit shorter than these pens. Also, it's pretty much an all plastic pen, very light, only weighs 11 grams. So as we said, this is a piston filling pen. So what, uh, the, actually, let me show it on the demonstrator because it's actually, you can demonstrate on the demonstrator a little bit easier. You unscrew this cap. It then gives you uh, access to the piston mechanism. As you can see, it has a piston mechanism that moves up and down when you manipulate this uh, dial here. And then you can just simply uncap it. That looks like it's going to hold a pretty good amount of, uh, amount of ink there. These pens, uh, of course, it, uh, it posts, as you might think. Um, it's got a, a kind of a smallish tapered section, not a big section at all. It seems to be pretty comfortable. Um, the nibs came in two completely different kinds. So the solid color pens came with what appears to be a, um, a, uh, a oblique stub nib. And the oblique stub nib basically says the word dollar and then the word pen in Urdu. Um, and the uh, uh, demonstrator pens have what looks to be a finer, a, f a fine point uh, nib uh, with the dollar pen logo, and it says iridium point, and it's a totally different shape to the nib, as you can as you can see. Um, one thing I kind of thought was cute: the back end of the caps on all these pens have the dollar pen sort of logo, which is just a dollar sign, which I think looks kind of kind of neat. Um, in terms of disassembly, it can actually be done with this pen, and it can be done fairly simply. This here does not appear to unscrew. This appears to be glued on. However, the nib and the feed do pull right out, um, and that makes it nice for cleaning. When you put this back in, it, at first glance, it would appear that it goes in any way, but it does not. There's a small little ledge there, which has to line up with the flat side of the nib so that does have to line up and then it pushes right back in like usual with these things the first time you take them out it'll be tougher to actually disassemble the pen um, one thing i found that was actually pretty pretty easy to do you simply um, grab it by these threads here uh, you don't want to use any sort of a tool that'll probably damage it but you can use like a rubber gripper here and and it will unscrew but again it's one of these things where the first time you do it it may be a little more difficult uh, than others and then the whole mechanism will pull right out of the barrel and as usual you could uh, extend this remove this remove all these parts etc so um, when reassembling these I mean, it does appear that these had silicone grease on them but I would re re grease these a little bit before reassembly and I would also um, put some silicone grease on these threads uh, back here. Um, and then um, this uh, screws back in quite, quite simply. And uh, 
there you go. So that was a that was quite an easy pen to um, to uh, disassemble. So that is uh, that is pretty pretty neat. Um, a very cheap pen that's also easy to maintain. Um, can't beat that. But but how does it write? That is the question. So um, let's actually switch the camera angle up. We're going to ink up both of these pens because the nibs are quite quite different. See how they both write. We're going to ink them up with the same ink. Um, the ink we're going to ink it up with is Robert Oster Fire and Ice because why not? Um, and uh, let's switch the camera angle and we'll be right back. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll do the demonstrator first, why don't we? So let's just uncap that, uncap that, uncap this. And we'll put that in. And let's draw up some ink. We'll do it a few times just to get a good fill, make sure our feed is nice and saturated, etc. 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 So boy that really looks like an awful lot of a lot of ink there. Now let's try the solid body pen. This is the one with the what looks to be like an oblique stub nib. It does have a nice ink window. So even though it's a solid body pen, we'll still get a pretty good idea of how well it fills. I have no reason to believe it'll be any different than the demonstrator. They seem to be the exact same mechanism. Let's just do that one last time, three times for good luck. And there we go, and that seems to be filled also quite nicely. So, now the next big question is how does it write? We're going to find that out right now. These pens really hold quite a bit of ink. I mean, that's a very, very nice fill right there, uh, as you can see on this demonstrator. And I really must say I like this ink window on the solid body pen. It's a big, nice big window. It runs all the way around the pen. They did a nice job with this. And again, for the price, these are really, these are really quite, uh, I'm quite impressed with these for the price. Okay, folks. So first we're going to take a look at the clear demonstrator version with the finer point uh, sort of convent somewhat conventional nibs. So this is a dollar pen. Model 717. And this is surely a steel nib. That is, uh, I would classify as somewhere in the fine, bordering on extra fine range. And this actually writes very nicely. It's quite smooth and just a nice pleasant flow. I, uh, I kind of like this quite a bit. It's a little bit of a, it's a very light pen. I mean, to be honest with you, the only, the only downside I'm seeing here is that um, the pen is really, really, really light. Um, so if you need a pen that's got some weight and substance to it, this is not gonna satisfy you. But for just a little bit more than a dollar, you can't really go, go wrong with this. Okay, now we're going to look at the solid color version of this pen with the what looks to be a um, uh, oblique stub nib. So this is the um, um, uh, dollar pen. Uh, model 717 also, but this is a steel uh, oblique stub. Oop. And uh, wow, this writes pretty nicely, and you definitely get the nice uh, line variation effect there. Look at that, that pretty much shows it all. And um, this definitely is doing what it's supposed to be doing in terms of line variation on an oblique stub nib. Really quite nice. Um, yeah, that's. Um, that's pretty impressive. Uh, again, we're talking about a very cheap pen here. Also pretty smooth. Um, not the wettest, so I'm going to say it's average wetness. But 
but um, but uh, really pretty nice and definitely writes writes uh, attractively and definitely like you can see you definitely get some nice line variation there okay, let's do a little bit of a head-to-head -head slash side-by-side -side comparison so here is the fine nib as I said this actually writes quite nice and um, you know lays down a pretty nice line quite smooth actually and now let's check go back to that uh, that stub nib and just so you can guys can see the difference same ink by the way as you saw so yeah I think that'll put that pretty much shows the difference there you got uh, pretty much a consistent line here nice nice line variation going on here so that is this pen let's talk about the ink just a little bit shall we okay this ink is Robert Oster Fire and Ice. Um, this is a very, very nice ink. Um, kind of a turquoisey kind of blue. Very, very uh, um, attractive. On this Rhodia paper, you're not getting too much in the way of any kind of special effects, but it is just a, it's a very, very um, very very pretty nice ink it um, is pretty decently behaved as well this is not a particularly wet pen but the ink is not uh, you know it's as you can see the the dry time is actually quite uh, quite uh, quite good um, and like all Robert Oster inks it comes in these nice 50 milliliter plastic bottles this ink is from Australia if you weren't aware of that so in addition to the Rhodia paper, let's see how this ink looks on the Tomoe River paper. So this is uh, Robert Oster. Fire. And ice. This is on Tomoe River paper. Um, and let's um, and let's see how that does with the fine point as well. So that's with the oblique board, and this is with the fine slash extra fine nib. And if you look very, very closely, you can see there are tiny, tiny amounts of red shading um, on the, uh, that you can see on this Tomoe River paper. On the um, Rhodia paper, that red shading does not really manifest itself really much at all. But you do kind of pick it up on this Tomoe River paper, which um, makes it look pretty nice. So, I think that will do it for this episode. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, leave a comment, and click that like button. It would be much appreciated. And as always, until next time, have a good day. Bye-bye.